Hi everyone, uh, it's Stu here again. Um, welcome to our latest webinar. It's uh, February the 7th, it's Tuesday, and it's a uh, blue sky out of my window uh, to the right of me here. So I hope you're all well, staying safe. Today we're going to be looking at trending strategies, so specifically trending strategies, and specifically for the Forex and the stock market, okay? Difference between uh, trading stocks and trading Forex, we'll go through that. And then we'll look at some uh, three or four trending strategies today. So welcome, everyone. Hope you can hear me loud and clear. So let's get going. Lots to get through today. Um, the PDF is attached to the uh, webinar today. So uh, do download it. Once you take screenshots, do what you want with it, basically. it's uh, We're here to help. So um, um, any questions, obviously, do ask. Uh, I say hopefully you can all hear me. There's quite a few of you in there already. Uh, lots of people joining as i speak so um obviously any issues we have or you have hearing me or seeing me or if i'm speaking too quickly uh lindsay nicholas okalunula uh please let me know because uh, i tend to speak too quickly i'm afraid uh any questions that i don't answer uh please email me at webinars at hfm.com it's quick way of getting hold of me um <clears throat> And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get going. So uh, trading uh, is risky is a risky business, as we talked about last week. Risk management is all, uh, and trading CFDs on forex um, futures or whatever it is your, your type of derivatives is risky. So do understand uh, margin, spread, all those other good things as well. Um, so um, I'll just leave that up there for a minute or two. Um, our disclaimer. Uh, full risk one is obviously on our website, but you know it's all about protecting what you have. This business, uh, not um, no trying to make as much money as you can as quickly as you can. Uh, the, the tortoise always outdoes the hare. Uh, that's my ugly mug. Uh, looks a bit different to me. Let me specs on, don't I? <laughs> a different suit. My uh, background is in the city of London. Those of you are new, uh, a few new names here. I don't recognise. So welcome everyone. Thank you for your time today. Hope you're going to get something out of this. Feedback is everything as well, remember, guys. Uh, so do, you know, criticism is the you know, best way of moving forward. Uh, feel free to shout and stamp your feet if when it doesn't make any sense or it's not working for you. Uh, for, my, for me, trading, investing is all about probability, keeping things simple, and trading the time frame and investing over the time frame that works for you individually. Uh, but principally, it's about knowing yourself. This business is a psychological business it's a mindset business it's a mind game do what is probable keep it simple but understand the numbers so when i mean that i mean the things about what the spread on the asset i'm trading what's the you know the rollover charges what's the potential slippage what's you know what's the leverage on uh, more importantly on, on the product i'm trading uh, how is that going to affect my capital uh, and when i've you know can i accept losing uh, that's a principle of good trading. If you can accept losing, you can move forward. If you can't accept losing, go and do something else because uh, you'll never move forward. Uh, but this is a, a, so it's a great opportunity and obviously the risks are there for everybody to see. So take care, step, trade safely and uh, we're here to help. So today we're going to look at the difference between trading Forex and equities, similarities and the differences. Um, uh, and we're going to look at some uh, uh, strategies so we're going to look at a very simple exponential uh, crossing strategy, uh, simple trend following approach. We're going to look at uh, something a bit more sophisticated called the, the AMA or the Adaptive Moving Average and the Triple Exponential Moving Average or the TMA, the AMA and the TMA individually and combining them. Um, are they any better than simple or exponential moving average? We'll see in the in the um, uh, in the webinar, hopefully. We'll have a look at Heiken Ashi again, a different way of presenting our candles, but I like Heiken. I personally like Heiken Ashi candles a lot. Um, uh, obviously, everything here, whether you're using EMAs, AMA, or TEMA, or Heiken Ashi, they all have their pros and cons. There isn't a perfect uh, trading strategy or trading system. There's, you, you know, you never get perfection in the markets. Uh, but most of these approaches are good enough. And that is really the rub, okay? You know, moving averages, whether they're whatever they are, are always late, are always late. And that's people don't use them and they hate them because of that. Uh, and how late they are is, is, you know, how long the number is, the function of their of their length. So a 200-day moving average is much, much later than a five-period moving average. 
stands to reason, doesn't it? Um, but um, you know, they're still you know very effective and very powerful both for traders, investors, and uh, you know, uh, regardless of the time scale that you're using. So that's what we're going to look at today, um, and um, obviously how to apply them with stop losses and targets and all the rest of it. Okay, so. Uh, if somebody could say they could hear me, I would appreciate that. Um, anybody that's here, uh, William, Victor, Talani, anybody? Please just say yes, we can hear you. Betty, Adrian, Brian, Santi Form, anybody? I'd appreciate it because it's a bit unnerving sometimes. You get through a few slides and then people say, I can't hear anything. Oh, oh eventually, key something. Remember as well, there aren't any stupid questions, guys. Adrian, thank you very much. You can go top of the shop. You get an A star for being first up. A Trienda, you were second, and you can hear me. Uh, Langa, thank you very much. Good to see you again, my friend. Uh, and Victor can hear me as well. Very good. Thank you very much. Right. There aren't any. There aren't any stupid questions. Okay. Don't be afraid of asking questions because that's how we all move forward. If you don't understand something, stop me. And we can we can I'll explain it if I can't explain it so that you understand it it's my problem not your problem it's always the problem of the teacher not the not the student um, when it comes to learning stuff whatever we're learning whether it's trading um, um, history geography or whatever it is uh, so the similarities and differences between trading forex and equities you know they are similar and different but clearly interconnected you know it's always down to style, and that's why I talk about risk management so much and knowing yourself. You know, the 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 deeper the volume on a market, the time frame that fits you, liquidity, all of those things help in your know, managing your risk. The deeper the liquidity on a on a on a product, uh, the more likely you are that it's going to move around. You know, deeper the volume, more people trading it, uh, the safer it can be. You know, obviously the forex market is a huge. 24 hours a day five and a half days a week market it never closes the over the counterness of it the otc that's what it means here uh over the counter otc it's a 24-hour market very low commissions trading fx um these days it even if you're you know you're trading zero sp spread accounts with commissions on them uh, many cfd accounts have obviously no um uh, no spread uh, no uh, commissions at all but the spread's a little bit wider so understand the product you're trading whether it's uh, whether i say whether it's stocks or whether it's uh, forex obviously uh, it's a bigger market in forex it's very liquid huge volumes certain parts of the day that overlap between the london and the new york um, session is the is the deepest market the ones with the highest volumes and the deepest liquidity stock markets are very very popular uh, people tend to start trading stocks they tend to own stocks they tend to understand them a bit better or that's where they start to do their research and can understand like a, a sales forecast. They can understand how well, how many phones iPhone, uh, I, Apple have sold, for instance, is it above or below expectations? Um, you know, and if you're going to start with stocks, you know, start with the big companies, the big blue chip companies, as they're known as uh, ones that have, have many, many people analyzing them. They have many banks analyzing them have you know tighter spreads because they're much more uh popular and traded um uh, uh on their fundamentals their balance sheets their earnings and their outlooks we're in the middle we're coming to the end of the the fourth quarter of 2022 earnings season so the the big companies the well-known companies many of them have already reported many of them have done very well some of them haven't done so well amazon for instance uh, are expecting no uh, profits for the first quarter of 2023 and their stock has fallen uh, quite significantly. Uh, Meta, Facebook uh, talked about many job cuts and, and saying 2023 is going to be a year of cost cutting. So that's let, uh, seen their stock uh, price rise very significantly. BP this morning announced the big petroleum company, uh, integrated oil company, uh, excuse me, uh, announced record profits, 23 um, million pounds, I think it was. Uh, huge huge profits obviously that has its own implications with regard to tax and um you know the oil markets and all the um uh, fundamental things about climate change that sit around the oil market as well but uh if, as an investor as a, a dividend holder in uh, bp you'd be quite happy because they're buying lots of stock back and they're giving out lots and lots of dividend anyway uh, that's you know you know the, all of the you know the variances between the you know, forex and uh, and stock markets and stock markets 
uh, driven by fundamentals, uh, typically in earnings. Uh, FX driven more by you know interest rates, and the central banks are really the fundamentals that drive the forex market. So, <clears throat> what are the central banks doing? Well, they're all increasing interest rates at the moment, aren't they? So that should benefit um, the, the uh, currency, and that's what we've seen. So, you know, very, very, very strong uh, dollar last year, 2020. Um, um, three, uh, sorry, 2022. Uh, it declined a wee bit at the beginning of the year, and it's come back a wee bit in, in the last few days after that very, very strong non-farm payroll data. I've got something Tarek related to the forex. It's um, you know the outlook is that the jobs market in the US is uh, much, much more robust than many were expecting. So um, uh, there's lots and lots of things to trade with a broker like HFM. It's a CFD contract. It's a contract for difference. The difference between the two um, members of the thing you're trading. So if you're trading Euro USD uh, on the spot market, it's the actual price now. If you're long that particular pair, you're expecting the Euro to outperform the dollar. So the, that pair will go up. If you think the um, euro will underperform the dollar, you would go short, and the price would come, uh, and uh, you, you would make a profit on your trade if the price of that pair went down. Uh, they can be traded uh, as spot contracts, as I said, the, the the price now or futures contract for a potential um, direction uh, of price in the future. Okay, there's tens of thousands of stocks globally, obviously, uh, hundreds of pairs of. Uh, uh, of forex pairs to trade but again if the, the deepest liquidity the highest volume are on the main forex pairs uh, the main forex pairs are the ones that involve the us dollar okay there's eight major currencies um <clears throat> but the ones that involve the dollar the us dollar are the ones that have the tightest spreads and the deepest liquidity uh, and they're the majors okay you know if you're trading the pound against the yen lots of people do or the euro against the yen or the aussie against the yen uh, the, the, the japanese yen um it doesn't involve the us dollar but obviously the movement of the us dollar will have an impact on those pairs anyway they can move much more rapidly than some of the dollar pairs so find something that works for you uh lots and lots of free information about you don't have to pay for information these days on whether you're trading stocks or you're trading forex obviously the bigger the currency or the bigger the uh, stock you want to trade, the more information there is. That's why we talk about blue chip high value stocks as the ones to perhaps start with as a beginner, simply because there's more information about, um, there's more analysis done by uh, people interpreting how well the companies are doing uh, than, you know, smaller, fast growing, uh, you know, these um, uh, sort of speculative, um, uh, uh, very exciting, you know, incredible uh, growth rate uh, quite companies but you know they perhaps haven't got the the track record behind them and there's, there's lots of different types of stocks but certainly the blue chip ones are the ones that many many people start with um, and many people as I said uh, before many people find stocks and equities easy to trade but I guess most of you in here today lots of people just arrived so uh, welcome everybody uh, that most people are here today are trading forex I don't know I mean a quick straw poll who's I mean, is anybody trading stocks? Let me start the other question. Anybody here trading stocks and not Forex? Anybody exclusively trading stocks? I can't imagine there's many of you, I guess most of you are trading uh, Forex or a combination of the two are here to try and find out about that. So is anybody trading exclusively equities? Wait for that. Excuse me, I see my water there. So I say, uh, I, I mean, you know, when I started trading, I was buying stocks rather than trading forex, but uh, uh, and not trading CFDs. But you know, um, CFDs were available uh, later on, and uh, you know, a lot more. Uh, uh, once you understand the leverage involved uh, and respect the leverage involved, you can uh, you know use that uh, for your uh, benefit if you're trading it. Uh, um, uh, prudently, but I say lots of people get started with stocks. I mean, this is a nice little slide I found about the different types of stocks. Uh, and I, you know, I've talked about blue chip stocks, or so well-established, well-recognized corporations. You know, all the big ones would be in there. But you can still have a blue chip stock that is still a, you know, it can still be a very good dividend stock. I, it's a, um, they 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 give back to their stockholders uh very very regularly so some of the you know, many of the pharmaceutical companies many of the cyclical companies can also be good dividend um 
uh, yielding companies as well, cyclical stocks, those that, that aren't really affected uh, by the, uh, the or are affected, sorry, by the cycles in the economy. I mean, you know, Apple very, very much a, a blue chip stock these days, still very much a growth stock, many would say as well. Uh, but some would say, well, you know, it's not, it's more of a value stock. So, um, um, you know, it's a different way of, of carving up the market. But these are all names I would hope you, you've recognised, obviously, that the, what we saw in the uh, in the pandemic in particular was this rally in these um, you know these speculative high risk uh, companies uh, the uh, what were they called the Wall Street bets gang on uh, pin interest wasn't it uh, you know some you know AMC and bad Beth and uh, bad Bed Bath and Beyond uh, I know it's just they got a a one billion dollar uh, investment, so they saved them from going bankrupt, and their stock rallied 92% yesterday. AMC was up nearly 12% yesterday. Uh, Tesla, now again, would you argue is Tesla still a speculative stock? Who knows? Lost 65% last year, didn't it? But there's some many, many uh, believers in uh, in uh, Elon Musk and his uh, electric car company in particular. Uh, you know, beyond me, that was, a, that was a very speculative stock. It started out very, very high, came down very, very quickly. Uh, you know, and um, they can be crashing. He's, he's, he's that, that bed, bath and beyond, uh, you know, went all the way to $55, $54, um, <clears throat> uh, the height of the speculation of the, in the pandemic uh, and the, uh, the Wall Street bets and then many other companies like uh, AMC and um, and uh, that video company. So, um, uh, it's, um, its name escapes me for a minute, but you get the point, you know, stocks, you know, they can disappear very, very quickly. Look at this, down to $1. I think it's jumped to about $4 after that news yesterday. Uh, um, so be very, very careful, obviously, with stocks. But as with others, you know, have a strategy and follow the rules, basically. Obviously, here, this one's been short, really, very much short since uh, the middle of uh, April last year. A bit of a rally for that week. It's a very strong rally, wasn't it? But, oh, dear me. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, speculative stocks, blue chip stocks, stick to the blue chips, really. You know, as I say, equities can disappear. Companies can go bust. Very, very unlikely uh, for an FX pair to go bust. You know, long-term traders tend to be in equities. You know, some equity traders also find it very hard to go short. That's the beauty of CFDs. You know, it's all about that mindset thing. Uh, if you've bought a share, you've invested in it, you're holding it, they still find it very hard to hedge their position by going short with CFDs um, uh, when things aren't going uh, are great guns. Uh, but, you know, that's the way to, to spread your risk. Uh, volume, as with all markets, can be absolutely key. It's much more accurate uh, with stock markets. It's, it has to be reported. It is reported. Remember, stock markets are open for a fixed period of the day. Uh, if you're actually buying and selling the actual stock, you can only do it when the market's open. If you're going to trade out of hours uh, in the grey market, you know, you need a broker, you need a bank that's or a stock broker that's going to allow you to do that. Uh, if you're trading CFDs, you know, remember, they can be traded 24 hours a day. But uh, remember, if you're trading outside of the trading hours, the stock market hours um, in the US or the UK or Asia or wherever you are in the world, you know, be aware of that and the volumes are uh, 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 correctly reported uh, by the stock by the stock exchanges every single day, rounded up every week. We have the commitment of traders report at the end of every week <coughs> uh, for the futures market and the equity market, excuse me, to show you exactly what positions people have got. So, excuse me, so volume is, is much more accurate, much more easy to uh, uh, collect. Uh, as a retail trader for equities and it is Forex. The thing with Forex is because it's uh, an over-the-counter uh, type um, uh, procedure that's instituted by the big banks in trading at the, you know, these high, huge, huge volumes, it's very difficult to get an accurate volume measure on uh, on Forex trade. So, you know, Forex always be volumes, always treat it with a pinch of salt. Uh, but whatever you're trading, uh, if you're trading as a derivative trader or, or whether you're even buy, you know, buying and investing in stocks, you must understand the things around the product that you're trading. So if you're trading as a CFD trader, you need to understand the margin, the leverage, the spread, the cost, the regulations regarding the different markets and products that you're trading. Okay, obviously the big um, 
uh, market over the last few years, obviously being in the crypto market. Uh, that's you know one of the big things we saw last year was these exchanges going bust, uh, Luno going bust, and and you know lack of regulation being one of the fingers that was pointed at. The regulators being slow to regulate. Uh, that whole sphere, uh, but it is the future. Digital currencies are the future. Digital uh, assets are the future. As we've seen with NFTs, and again, huge rise in those over the last couple of years. But you know, um, high volatility comes with higher risk. So unregulation, uh, unregulated markets are asking for um, or are very, very risky. So be very, very careful trading unregulated things that you don't understand. So uh, what do we offer here? Well, across the platform, we've just launched our new uh, trading app, HFM app, uh, and you can trade everything uh, uh, on that. Uh, equities, obviously, through our MT platform, CFD stocks, um, loads of, let's actually let's bring in the, uh, the website. Um, and we can we'll just go through, it's probably just easy to go through it on the website. Um, so hfm.com is our, homepage uh, and all these different types of things can be traded um, where we are here we are so that's the main home page um, uh, you now the products are here so forex and metals and energy CFD stocks physical stocks I'll come on to that in a minute we talked about cryptocurrencies EFTs EFTs are extra exchange traded funds uh, it's a way of diversifying your risk uh, in a particular market um uh, bonds treasury bonds very stable um investments um low return low risk um but again you can trade them as a, as a cfd as well so lots of things to trade across all different platforms whether it's um an mt4 mt5 the latest uh, derivative of uh, mt um, mt4 upgrade lots of mt4 lots of people have used it over years and just you know keep using it and it works for them why not why change it but again across all different platforms so whether it's your iphone or your ipad um use it that way um android uh, and then i say our hfm uh platform our new uh integrated trading platform you can use on your uh mobile device as well so uh and the assets can be traded uh one thing we've just launched uh recent or last year i should say not just launched but uh is the uh, products here is the physical stocks. You saw, I think you might see an advert for it. So you can again just you know invest um, in actual physical stocks, the big blue chips that we as I mentioned about at the beginning, the big US blue chips in particular. Um, um, through your through our platform here, it's something you can do before get dividends um, uh, to your account as well as, as the companies uh, report their earnings. Lots and lots of stocks, and you can buy. Uh, fractional shares as well. You don't have to buy the whole share in the particular company. So uh, investments from five dollars on the uh, platform um, available as well. So lots of things available. But as ever, it's all about you know managing the risk and managing the approach um, that you have. And that's what we're going to have a look at now. Okay, different ways of trading these these uh, movements of these assets. So as uh, just before we get into it, you know markets move. Uh, in cycles, they move up, they move down, and you know, depending on the time zone, you know, other time zones move within it. So the, this, if this is the big fat, the big fat black line here is the big uptrend. Uh, the medium speed is the uh, thinner, uh, the medium line, and then the thin line is the faster move. So the, the faster moving time frame loops around the medium, and the medium loops around the higher time frame. So all through this cycle here, this uh, from here the accumulation zone to the distribution zone, this is a big strong uptrend that the higher time frame is in. You know, at some points the medium time frame might actually be going backwards against the higher time frame, but eventually it comes back to in line with the higher time frame. So that's what I mean when I talk about uh, cycles within cycles and moves within moves. Um, um, within uh, trending markets. Remember, we're talking about particularly trending markets um, today. So let's have a look at some uh, very simple strategies, okay, that can be applied to all time frames uh, and against all assets, whether it's stocks, commodities, forex, whatever it is, these can be applied. Okay, this is a very straightforward um, 
crossing exponential moving average strategy. This slide is, is uh, it must be, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years old or something like that when I first put this together. Uh, but we're using um, two moving averages or three moving averages here. On this particular example, we're going to use, we're using the um, midpoint of the Bollinger Band as our third moving average here. So we're using a fast, medium, and slow. So just like here, we're using uh, a fast, which is a thin line, a medium, which is a thick line, and uh, a, a higher time frame, which is a big, thicker line. Okay, so we're using three moving averages. Um, we're going to use the nine and the five exponential moving averages. And on this, the next chart, we're, we're using the 20 um, period moving average. It happens to be the simple moving average when you use the Bollinger Bands. If you don't use, the, if you don't want to use the Bollinger Bands. Uh, use the 21 exponential moving average, so 5, 9, and 21 EMA, or uh, you can use the 20 period midline of the Bollinger Band using the same strategy. I like Bollinger Bands. I've always used Bollinger Bands. They tend to be on a lot of the charts I use. That's the only reason they're on there, basically, but the rules are still the same, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and the other key thing uh, for this strategy is something called the ATR. It's an oscillator that sits at the bottom of your chart, um, and it says 14 in brackets there, that's just the period, um, it's the, the setting, it's the default setting that comes out of the MT4, MT5 platform. So to go, to, to make a trade, you need these three moving averages to cross, but there's two steps, okay? Normally happens it, as a two step, sometimes it happens all, all three of them, uh, all, both steps happen at one in one bar, okay? So the five and the nine, uh, the needs to cross. So if we're going to go long, the five, the fast moving one, needs to cross from below the, the medium moving one to move up. Okay. The next thing that happens to take the trade would be the candle then needs to break the slow moving average, which in this case is the midline of the Bollinger Band or the 21 EMA. So at this point, the price is above all three moving averages, the five, the nine, and the 21 that's your long trade. If you're going to go short, it's the other way around. The five period, the fast moving average, needs to cross from above to below the nine period moving average. And then the price action, the, can the candle, price candle, then needs to close below the midline of the Bollinger Band or the 21 EMA. Let's have a look, quick look at that. Before we go on, let's have a quick look at that on the next chart. So what's happened here? So, um, Oh, this is just how it So this, this is uh, so one here on this, this particular chart. Here. There's the Bollinger Bands in green. There's the um, the yellow line is the nine period moving average, and the blue period is moving. That's a bad example because it hasn't um, it's already happened. So anyway, let's go. Let's go to this one here, number two. That was a was going sh um, uh, triggering a long position. The closing out two is the close out of that trend. And also a, lo a long position. Okay, so three is what's happened there. See, the blue line has crossed over the yellow line, and it also happens in that one candle. It's also happened to have crossed the the midline of the Bollinger Band. That often that doesn't happen. As you can see here at one, what's happened before is that the blue somewhere over here. Uh, if you can see that somewhere over here, off the off the chart, the blue has crossed from above to below the yellow, and that's the second step here where I've got a one, if that makes sense. We then crossed under the midline of the Bollinger Bands and we've gone short at one and we've stayed short till it's reversed back over the yellow line here. I'll come on to that in a minute. Okay, see it's the first time we've gone over. So anyway, going back to our first example, we're going long here because you can see. So with the blue line, the five has crossed over the nine and it's also happened to have crossed over the 20 or the 21 EMA, depends which one we're using. Uh, at three and it's gone long and it stayed above all the moving averages so there's the five the nine and the 20 so it's blue yellow green all in unison and we're all above it's only where we get to four here you can see that where that that red candle there where the four is that blue tick where the price action has closed the candle has closed below the mi the middle moving average and that's the reason to get out so we bought here at three we got out of four and it's gone um, short. It went long again here at five because we were above, but that hasn't happened. Then we've gone short, that hasn't worked out. 
and then it's flipped again here at seven where the blue has gone under then back over and it's in that same candle again or back over the mid the midline of the bollinger band back over the 20 period moving average and at seven it's gone long so five uh was a long position um we got out here or even here actually it doesn't look like i can't see behind seven but there so that was a losing trade five to six but seven was a an entry and we don't know where that's finished basically whenever this was drawn i can't remember that was it just happens to be and again it doesn't matter what it is this happens to be the euro odds on the four hour chart it could be oil it could be gold it could be uh, apple it doesn't matter this approach can be applied let's go back to the rules again so that's the uh that's the the, the reasons to get in okay now then the, the way of setting targets in the stop loss can vary okay i like i use the atr for setting stop loss firstly where are we going to get out well the stop loss needs to be below or above the turn you know of the market the target we'll come to the target in a minute so you know it, it's a bit sounds a bit crass but really it has to be where it has to be in a trending market where's the market turned okay sorry let's just go back to that slide here so here at two where did the market turn where's the bottom of the market we've been going down here quite nicely so the the stop loss if we'd gone long at two where would the stop loss be where would you put your stop loss at if we'd entered the market at number two Where has the market decided it's not going to go any lower because we're going to go long? It's round about here, isn't it? Okay, so you can do it various ways. Let me just turn. It's round about here, isn't it? Around the bottom. So you could have a very conservative one below the wick of that candle there. So if we've got in on this white candle, we go one, oops. We go, that's our entry candle. So we go one, two, three, four, five. So the fifth, the low point of the five candles is down here. If we want to be a bit more aggressive, we go to the low point of the last three candles, which would be around here. So it's, you know, if you want to be a, even more aggressive, you could say, well, the low, the real low is the end of these candles, isn't it, through here? So that's the low. That's your entry and off it goes. And you just let the trade run until it matches your rules where it's crossed under the um the midpoint of the of the of the middle um uh the middle uh bollage right. Yes, uh happy boy, you're right, under two or below this turn here, isn't it? Okay. So similarly here, let's just do it here. Um we can't do it for one because we know what price action are. Here it's at, uh, what, so that was our uh, three to four. Uh, what happened? Um, um, I've lost where I am now. No, that's three to four. That was a winning trade. Then it went, all right, let's do this. Uh, so here at five, where we went, it went um, long here, didn't it? At five, because it went back up again, because um, we'd already above that speculative one our stop loss would be down about here wasn't it so we would have got stopped out as it's actually also um crossed this level here as well so that's our losing trade so here at seven when we go long our stop loss at this point really is perhaps our entry candle because that's our lowest of this because it's trending up isn't it since you know it's gone up it's gone down a wee bit but it's still trending up so our low our current low point if we count back one two three four five candles it's our entry candle isn't it so our stop loss would be here um below the the, the wick of that candle because it's our entry candle a bit risky because it's the candle we've got in on but that's what the market's telling us and it's run off and it's into into profit on that one okay so uh, but oops. um so that's you know where the stop loss should be now then if we want to use there's different ways of setting our target okay so the stop loss is set okay as the trend starts to move okay so our stop loss here at, at six is below here as the trend starts to move up so here then we get to this 
the, the fourth white candle here, very small bodied candles these aren't they? So it's not this through. So we count back three again, one, two, three. Would we move our stop loss up to here after three candles? Might be a bit risky, mightn't it? Because you can see there's a bit of congestion through here. We haven't broken above this high yet here, have we? By the time we get to this candle, this big candle here, we might want to bring our stop loss up to the, the wick of this one or below this candle here as the trend is moving. Because we don't know, it. This, this looks quite good at this point, doesn't it? It's burst out the top of the Bollinger Band, which may be signs of a, of a, a, a pullback. But at this point, the completion of this candle here, where we got to 154.80, we don't know that those two are going to print up there, do we? So, you know, keep our stop loss here and just trail our stop loss. As we get to that candle there, you know, you know, it's been a big move, but you could still have your perhaps your bring it up to the the the, the your lowest moving average, the 20 period. Uh, by the time we get to this candle, you know, it might be an idea to br perhaps bring it up to this previous price here. Not too close, and uh, that's what I mean. If we got stopped out, but you know, if you wanted to follow the rules still, if this was a, a completed candle, this third white one, you know, one, two, three, our stop loss is still up here at the bottom of this candle here. Okay, if you want to count further back, could be lower, lower the wick here, but you know, the trend has moved up. Uh, we've got in, we've secured profit because we got in here, and we've you know, we can't lose now, we can't have a losing trade because our stop loss is here. Don't get it too close in case of a, a whipsaw, which we'll see in a minute as it whips back in the other way. Another way of setting your target is with this indicator here, the ATR, the average true range. Okay, so there's different ways of applying it if you want to trade it this way. That's a simpler way, just using your trailing stop loss to take you out. Uh, or if you want to take profits quickly, you can use the ATR at the time frame that you're using. There's three ways. I talk about one is to use what the ATR is at the time. Let me try and use a, a real chart to uh, demonstrate that um, rather than a fixed chart. So let's for, let's just use this for in this big candle here. Um, it's been short and then that went long there, and it hasn't it? And it's been long ever since, hasn't it? This happens to be the dollar index. So if that was our entry there on that big candle there at uh, 102.33, what was the ATR when that candle completed? Well, when that candle completed at whatever time it was uh, after the at, at four o'clock on Friday, the ATR was 0 0.19. Can you see? Can you see the ATR there? Can you see what the the number is? Nine, 0.19. So you would add one, you would add 0.19 to uh, 102.33, which is um, take us to 52, doesn't it? So our initial target will be around 102.52. So it's quite close, isn't it? We've got there within 102.52. Okay, so that would be our initial target would have been here after the big move here. It's not very far away. So we got in here. Our stop loss going following the rules is down here, isn't it? It's huge. So it's a huge risk for a little reward, you could argue. But because it's been such a big explosive candle and it's above the moving averages and the moving averages are all in alignment. So we've got 21, 9 and 5 all in the right order. They're not mixed up and crossing. They've already tried to go lower here and it didn't happen. We've gone long. So that's our first one. So we get our, we well, we hit our target after the second candle, don't we? So. Um, the, but that, that candle closes there, doesn't it? So would we enter again at this point, even though that was a down candle? Well, the answer would be yes, uh, because the moving average are now nicely aligned. So you'd answer, you, so you would enter again there at that the close of that candle there. Same again. So this, um, if you'd taken one and then see what the ATR is. So now this time it's 23. So the volatility has ticked up. So from that uh, entry now, instead of it being um, 19, we've got an extra four, so 23, so we're adding 23. So we want to take it to 57 this time because it's, you know, ironically, it's the same time. So 57 would be the close of the following candle. So we've bagged what? We've bagged 19 pips uh, and um, uh, we don't bagged 19 and 23 as this was rallied out. We've hit that. On the end of that candle, and what's uh, it's a bad example because it's got it's all run really quickly. 
And then the rules are, you know, you enter again at the close of that candle. The ATR now has gone up uh, to 24. So 24 from there takes us to, uh, what's that, 70, 82, doesn't it? It takes to 82, which is just above there. So that's our third target, which it doesn't actually reach until the, until the start of Monday, does it? That's over the weekend. So our third target has been reached. We've made that profit, that profit, and that profit. Three winning trades, so we get out following that one ATR rule, okay? So everybody still with me? That's one way of doing it. Okay, so this is the 100% of the ATR um, for a maximum of three times. And again, trail your stop loss up as we did before. The second way of doing it is to split your target. Let's take all those um, candles off. Oops. Second way of doing it, object list. Which ones have I just put on? Uh, I can't remember, I think it's those. So again, that's our entry. Uh, candle, so that's, our st that's still our entry candle, isn't it? It's still the ATR, sorry, that, that candle of one is still 90. So that's our first target of, uh, no, it's not, it's... Um, Not 19, it's um, 52, we said, didn't we? 52, I took the wrong one off. That's our first target, still one times the ATR. Oh, you get, you get, so again, it's hit within two candles. Um, so that's target one, and we take 80% of our risk there. And then target two would be two and a half times um, the ATR. That's what the, the this rule here says, okay? So as you can see here, um, two and a half times uh, target two, okay? Um, the ATR, so 19 times, so 19, let's do this, 2.5, takes to 47, 19 times two and a half, it's 47 and a half. So, so 30, so our entries here is 102.33 plus 47. Um, would take us to 80. So target one is here and target two is up here at 80. That's something else good. So there we go. That one does, that one would have closed out. So target two, thank you. Target two, thank you. And again, our initial stop loss will be down there. And by the time we got to the end of the day, one, two, three, we might have driven our, brought our stop loss up to our first target. Okay, so that's another way of doing it. Obviously, this has gone on, and this is what lots of people get frustrated about. Oh, look, uh, we got out very quickly, but this is a massive move, and it's continued through Monday, and it's continuing today on Tuesday. And this is the, this is the other, this is the one, that, so the third way is the real blockbuster, for when trend, you can get on a trend and sit on it and add to it as it's getting stronger, it's continued to go up. So if we go back to the third way of trading this is to open the trade and just let it run. I straight, keep your stop loss as the trend is going with you, as you're with the trend, as the trend is unwinding uh, until it breaks back below the middle moving average. In this case, it's the nine EMA. So we're using the five, the nine, and the 21 or the midline of the Bollinger Band. Okay. So this one is the midline of the Bollinger Band. And the one we're using here is the 21 EMA. So here, let's take all those lines off again. Uh, okay. So that's our, so we're not using the ATR this time. We're just letting the trend run. So that's still our entry there at 102.33, but we um, we don't get out until the price closes under the yellow line. As you can see, into Friday, it didn't, did it? Into Friday, it kept going. The blue and the yellow are still, they haven't crossed again, have they? They haven't crossed. We haven't closed under the yellow. We've touched it here during the candle, but the candle closed above, above, 
Friday, is this Friday or Monday? Monday went all the way up here to uh, where we are now, 56. And it's only here on Monday's open or this morning that that trade from Friday was closed out. You see, and that's why trend, people say trends can go on and on and on uh, much more than you can stay liquid. So that trend, now that following it there, stay, even if you're, you're open one position, you didn't add to your position, you know, you've got in at 102.33 and you've got out at 103.28, um, nearly a whole num whole hundred pips, a uh, thousand points, hundred pips uh, to the upside there. And what's happened now? What 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 position are we in now on this particular asset on this particular time frame? Are we long or are we short? What's happened today on this particular asset? Happy boy, you answered the last question. Somebody else this time. Langer, Adrian, Victor, anybody? What 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 would ha what's happened now? So we closed our position here. Uh, the blue went, the yellow went, uh, the blue went on uh, from above to under the uh, yellow. So we've closed out. It's gone flat for one, two, three, four, five. And what happened here? It's falling, yes, but what's 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 happened at this point here, everyone? We're still going up, says Langer. Absolutely. So we could have got back in here because we've gone, we're back in sync, aren't we? I can't I can't zoom that up any more than I have. Okay, we've gone flat. I'll talk about the flatness in a minute. That's you don't want to be in when it's flat, when they're not in alignment. But here, this morning, or whatever that was, on this particular asset, that would have potentially triggered at 10 o'clock this morning the nine o'clock candle has potentially triggered or has triggered another long position because we're all in alignment aren't we we've got the blue the yellow and the magenta it's not as clear as it is here okay it's not as clear as it is here is it the, the gap's nicely wide here and the distance between the moving areas is also quite important so the closer they get the less trending they are so it's just looked like it's starting so our entry here at uh, 103.43, our stop loss would be a bit, you know, 103.30 probably, or a, perhaps below the at those lows there. And we just would have kept, if you'd put it there, uh, the low of the followed the rules, the low of the last three candles, it would still be in. It got quite close to getting stopped out, didn't it, in the last hour or so? But that's still long um, um, there. Uh, and that's still in the eight. If you were using the ATR approach, probably already got out. The ATR is 11, so you'd have got 43 to uh, 54. You would have already been taking your first target. Can you see that? That's the ATR at that candle there is 11 or dot 11. So 103.43 plus 11 is 103. Um, 54, and we would have hit that in the last hour or so, wouldn't oh, they? But actually, we hit it uh, in the following hour, didn't we? Straight away, so we'd have been out there. Our stop loss is probably still where we, uh, we might have dragged it up. This wick is a bit scary at the moment, so we'd like to see that move a bit, and our stop loss is still probably around about there. Okay, Victor, you're right, it consolidated. So we had a nice strong trend, didn't we, where we're, the moving average were nicely in alignment, and then they started to cross again. So the blue went from above to below the yellow. So we were looking to go short, but the candle price never closed below the, 20, the third, our second indicator, did it? But what it did do was flip, uh, and it's a very weak entry because it's you know they're not a lot, they're not really sloping up yet. Uh, but now you know one, two, three, four hours later, they are starting to show some sort of advance, I and mean, it might stall here. Why might it stall here? Because it's near the all the highs that we've had recently, isn't it? These highs that we got through here. So 103.60 really needs to break to the upside. The big fat body of the candle needs to break above 103.60 for this trend to then look like it's going to start to move higher again. Okay. And that's why trending, that's why moving averages are so good for keeping you on the right side of the move. So 
Since non-farm payroll, dollar's been strong and it continues to strong. It rallied uh, Friday, it rallied Monday, and here we are Tuesday trying to make new new recent highs at 103.60 is the story of that move. Okay, so everybody got it? Any questions? Sorry, I've, I've laboured that a wee bit, as I tend to. Oops. Okay, so again, this is we, we were demonstrating this one with the euro Oz on the four hour. That was a live one on the dollar index. And again, you can pick any chart. Okay, this is, happens to be a stock market with the same. This happens to be Nvidia on the uh, uh, daily time frame. So again, it would have been short here and out there. So that would have been look, that would have been a losing trade, but you could have gone short again there. It's gone against you there, but then it's come against you. It's come for you. Uh, gap up, entry here, rally, 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 rally. As, as you're trailing your stop losses down here, you trail your stop loss up. It retraces a wee bit. You get this big candle here. Your stop loss would probably be at the bottom of this candle as we start to go up. And then as we top out up here, you, whether you'd moved your stop loss from the bottom of this candle as we we started to roll over, but you'd have been taken over on a, there. That would have stopped your long trade. So from this entry here to there, that's your that's your profit, isn't it? And at this point, it does the exact opposite for you. Okay, that's a short position, isn't it? Because we've got the the five crossing from above to below the nine, the the the, the medium uh, moving average. Big gap down. It's probably end of day because maybe some earnings. But then it's continued to move down. At this point, whenever this was April 2022, uh, Nvidia was still short on an end of day basis, wasn't it? Okay, right. Stephen saying, I'm having some issues placing in placing my markets. I don't know what you mean by. Do you mean the market you want to trade, Stephen? I don't. I'm not quite sure what your question is. Is there a way to calculate two and a half point one to one risk reward using this strategy? Um, you you can. Yes, you use the ATR to to to, uh, um, to place your stop loss. Let me just answer that for you. Um, Wait, right. So you're having some issues in place. Or oh, which markets to trade, you mean, Stephen? Which markets to trade? Well, as I say, if you're new, if you're new, uh, you know, trade the markets with the tightest spreads and the and the biggest liquidity. So if you're going to trade forex, look at the euro dollar because that's got the tightest spreads of all. It doesn't necessarily, and it it follows the same rules. Let me just show you um, the markets. So I, I, I sort of the 12 key markets, oh, there's more than 12 on here, but the main markets I follow every day are these ones here. There's how many is on here? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 14 here, but you know, for different reasons. But it's, these are, you know, that don't really follow that. And, and I'd, I'd, of, the, of the stock markets, I I'd, I'd tend, I know lots of people like trading the, the NASDAQ, I tend to follow the S&P 500 rather than the, the, the uh, US 100. But really and the cad so if i had to you know one two three four five six not that one either swiss so basically the main um yeah if we had to cut it down to get started that's these six eight markets okay no longer you enter uh, when all three are in alignment that's the point okay you wait for the first but oh, let's I don't know, let's let's use and let's use sterling. So here, no, oh, I haven't got a, an example where it's done one without doing the other at the moment. Um, they've all happened on this because it's so volatile at the moment. They've all happened at the same time. No, you wait till they're all in alignment. Okay, actually, there's there's an example here at the top. So here you can see at this hour here, we'd been we'd been going sideways. Big up candle here, whatever, whenever this is. Forget about when it is. Just look at the, what the patterns are doing. So we've gone up, gone up, gone up, ran out of steam. So here, at this time here, nine o'clock on the second of February, the blue line. Oh, in fact, this one here, the, the blue line is starting to cross the yellow. Uh, an hour later, can I zoom that up? There we are. An hour later, it had actually no, took that off and moved back. Okay, so we've been there. We are. Sorry about that. So, Langer. Okay, 
Oh, who asked the question? Uh, Langer. So here, blue line. So that's the fast period. That's the fast moving average. Remember, the lower the number, the closer the moving average is to the candle, the price action. So you see the blue line is always closest to the price action. Okay. The nine is the uh, medium. And the 21 is the is the like the daddy. You know, we've got to break uh, the medium and the the, the 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 fast and the slow medium cross, and then we cross the big daddy, and then we enter. Okay. So here was our heads up. The price had closed below the five and the nine at this point, but the moving averages at this point here hadn't crossed. Can you see? It wasn't until the five, the next hour, where the blue was crossed below the yellow. Okay. So that was a first up. That's our first indicator completed. Tick the box. Come back an hour later, and it's crossed under the 21 as well. So that's the entry, 123, whatever it is, 123.43 at this time at 12 o'clock on the close of that 11 o'clock candle, uh, and down we go. Now then, what probably would have happened here is we might have been stopped out on that volatility there. And why was that? That's probably because it was non-farm payroll, one of the risks of trading non-farm payroll on um, Friday, okay? However, if you'd had your stop loss in the right place, so that would have been our entry. You count back one, two, three, you know, you would have been kept out of that. That even that spike would have kept you out. Although you might have moved it down to there. I probably would have moved my stop loss to there and it would have spiked me out. But on the conclusion of that candle, that trade, that trend is still very much set, isn't it? Because we've got the blue, the yellow, the magenta all nicely sloping down. So you could have added again there. And it's been on your side ever since, hasn't it? And you not got out. It closed, uh, went over it there, didn't it? Close to it, but you wouldn't have got out into this big up candle here. So you'd have missed out this bottom of the turn, but you still would have got uh, out there for that trend there. Okay. Then it would have gone long, but you'd have been stopped. There. there you go. That's you know one of the um, um, that would have been a big losing trade there, wouldn't it? Because you'd have been gone long here. As it's crossed, follow the rules, gone up, but then taking you out. So there you go. That's a losing trade. But immediately, you you that closes you out. If you, I mean, if you had your stop loss there, you'd have been closed out during that candle, and then gone short there, and followed that down, and then you know got out there. So you'd have got that profit. What's it doing now? It's trying to go long. Trying to go long didn't didn't. So you could have added short, but it's flat here. See, so when the moving average is a flat, you want to be staying out. Okay. Uh, some losing trades that's chopped up that's gone up that's gone short again there so again this one here is currently short from nine ten o'clock this morning again okay so it's always the three uh, uh stop loss victor yes you can use the atr let me just i'm not going to get to the new i spent too much time on the move ema crosses i'll do um the uh and if people are happy to stay i'm happy to go through the other two i won't do how can i actually do i'll go through the ema tma but i've run right over time so uh, i'll do the tma and the ama as a separate webinar um perhaps um perhaps later in the week um because it was I, they're on the slides follow the principle again and uh, uh, um and the slide deck and we'll uh, we'll have a look at it live again for you so what was i saying so yeah so sterling is, is short there from this morning um sorry you would, I, was, I was trying to find the am uh, the atr wasn't it so if we were using to answer your question so let's let's do it live shall we so that would have been um the ATR type approach. So, uh, so uh, zero zero one four four. Okay. So that's our entry. You know, just using the the turn in the market, our stop loss would have been up here, wouldn't it, above the uh, this turn here. So that's our entry, and that's when you're talking about risk reward, um, Victor. That's our risk, isn't it? That's the risk there. So we're talking in risk reward terms. That says, what does that say? That says 350 points, okay, uh, 0.29 and 1%. So for a one-to-one -one risk reward, we want 340 points, don't we? Uh, sorry, that's, what did I say that was? Sorry, 3, 4, 350. So 350 takes us down to about, 
about here, three, four, there we are. So we'd have hit that in the last hour or so. We would have hit our risk reward of one to one. If you want 2.5, we'd need to, that's the uh, that's the, the turn in the market stop loss. If you're going to use the um, ATR, so that would be, um, uh, what's that, 144 times 2.5. Uh, so that's, um, um, that's what, what's our entries? Our entries at 2219. So, Uh, so that's our entry here. So 2.5 ATR on this out it would take us to 580 or 579. So our stop loss, instead of being at 25567, would be just above that at 57, um, 579. Okay, so I really followed that. Okay, Victor's question. So Victor was asking, uh, that's our stop loss of two and a half times the ATR. So let's let me just do that again. So that's the trigger to enter here at 12219. Okay. The ATR at the time is 00144. Okay. So we've got that. So two times 144 is 360. So if we add 360 here, this bit here to our 219 takes us back up here to uh, 12597. So it's 125. Sorry, I can't zoom that up anymore, but that's our stop loss there. So that's that. If that's your 2.5, there, that's. Um, oh, I'm really making a meal of this. Uh, so that's our entry there. It's now 385 points, but we would have still. You know, we've still hit our target, our first target in this current hour. Okay. Victor, I hope that's answered your question. Uh, if five EMA across nine EMA price still above 20, still go long. No, uh, yes, well, uh, yes, Simon, that's that's what's happening because some in most, not in most cases. Um, so there, so that Simon, coming back to your question here. Here it's been flat, isn't it? So we start to tick up here. So the blue has crossed above the yellow here. So that's our first entry. Sometimes the candle goes through the 20 as well. So that would be the entry. It didn't at this point. So that would have been our long position. Let's, just, let's, not, let's not make all that this is always going to be a winner. That looked okay, didn't it? Except the, the 20 period was flat. It wasn't angled. Okay. We're looking for angles all the time, the slope of the moving average. And that's what we so that would have been a long entry here which, here on that candle there which hasn't worked out has it we would have had our stop loss down here but we just but we would have been stopped out there not at us we might have moved our stop loss up here we might have done i don't know because it's gone flat hasn't it it's flattened out we might have got out as, as they've gone flat so flat get out okay Ahmed, uh, you've got to wait. You've got to be patient, my friend. Can I get a bot of someone I can invest from waiting for profit? Ahmed, you can. You can, uh, you know, uh, uh, invest in a uh, 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 a, um, um, uh, a a a a HF copy or a Pam account. Copy some uh, well-known trail. I'll, I'll come to your question in a minute, Ahmed, um, uh, for that. Uh, but remember, it's all about um um uh patience and discipline trading you know if you're if you've got that sort of mindset where you you can't wait you want something to automate it yes you can automate things but you know stay in charge of it i'd say stay in charge of it um okay so that's the crossing ema strategy and i've i've taken a whole hour on that i wasn't planning to um guys there's uh, quite a lot of you still in, in here the hours up and i apologize and i've got a lot more um uh, techniques I want to to show you. If you're happy to hang on for another half an hour, I can keep going. If not, I can do this another day. What do we want to do? Do we keep going or should we do it another day? I'll keep talking until I get an answer. A second way, some back testing I've done over the years for stock markets on an end of day basis. This is uh, 
specifically for stocks and specifically uh, for an end of day time frame. You know, when I drilled it all down, when I chunked all the numbers, these were the two. If we we're just going to use two moving averages, so instead of three, okay, we're saying keep going. Happy boy saying another day. I will repeat this, happy boy, uh, this from this bit on on another webinar, and I might even do it live this week as well. Uh, Adrian saying keep going. I'm late, but I think next session I will be on time. Uh, keep going. The vote is to keep going. I'm afraid, happy boy. Okay, so if you need to go, I apologize. Have a look at the the, the slides uh, when you get some time. And, um, and and get back to me. Send me some questions about the other things we haven't talked about today. If you understand everything we've gone through, that's a um, that's a good start. Okay. So some back testing I did uh, on stocks on an end of day time frame a, a, a long time ago. Uh, these were the two best crossing moving averages. It's you know they, you've got to have patience to trade these, but they you now when the trend is working, these two cross and it's it's you know can be quite quite good. And as we've seen with those trends, they can go on for a long time. But the problem is, obviously, you cannot use a 13 and a half EMA uh, and a 49 and a half. So uh, 13 and 9 EMA looks like this. Okay, so the blue line here is the is the uh, the higher moving average, the slower moving average, and the 13 EMA is the um, uh, faster moving average. And as you can see, when they're flat. You know they're no good. You can't use moving averages when the market is going sideways and the market isn't trending. Remember what I said about moving averages? They're always late, and how late they are is how big the number is. So the the 13 dips down here, but we thought the 49 doesn't. Um, it dipped down here first, didn't it? The 49 didn't start moving until the price action was all the way down here. But here we've had them flat and they've, moved, and they've moved apart. So the 13, the fast moving has moved away. It's crossed from, uh, well, above uh, or with it here. This happens to be BlackRock, you know, and the trend has run and run and run and run and run, hasn't it? Before the first sign of a turn was back here. I mean, the low was all the way back here in March. Then it turned up, looked like it was going to go up, didn't work out, and we're back short. You know, it hasn't broken. Uh, and there's huge amounts of profit in these big long trends, even if you're using these sort of slow moving moving average. So the 49 and the 13 apply the same crossing principle, but at this time just use two. We're just using two moving averages. And I say I've back tested those, lots of different numbers for the moving average, and these are the two numbers that provide the best sort of returns over time. But you've got to be patient. And applied to the stock market in particular. I haven't back tested it for forex markets or other uh, markets, but it's worked very well on stock markets. Right, I'm going to run through two others now. In uh, I'm going to try and finish in 30 minutes. Okay, so with the MT5 platform, you get some other types of moving averages. Okay, uh, and we're going to talk about the TMA and the firstly the AMA, the Adaptive Moving Average. Okay, it's used for constructing. Uh, and moving, uh, it's tried to eliminate some of the noise. You know, during a trending market, the AMA becomes much faster and swings more quickly in the direction of the price movement. Okay, so it's trying to uh, get rid of the the noise and the lag of traditional moving average. It's it's better, uh, but it you know it's you know some people prefer it. You know, has it got the significant advantages over AMA and simple moving averages? I don't, I don't know, to be honest, but some people like it. Uh, Perry Kaufman was the guy that developed it. Perry's, I think he must be in his 80s. He's certainly in his late 70s. He's not in his 80s. He's been around for a long, long time. He's written about 15 trading books, all of them bestsellers. Perry Kaufman, if you haven't heard of him. Uh, there's his, um, I think that link's going to work. Um, control, it should do. Is that going to work? No, it's not. Oh, that, no, it didn't. There's the next slide. There's his, that's his website. There he is. Uh, I think it's, yeah, I, 80s, certainly late 70s, if not in his 80s. Um, and it was first developed in uh, Smarter Trade, one of his books from the 70s. Uh, it tr tries to take out the, that noise and the, the whippiness of uh, moving averages. Uh, he's often called the, the, the granddad or the father uh, of uh, full algo trading programs. He's a programmer and a trader. Um, so, the positives of the AMA is adjust the speed of the movement and average based on the noise and the volatility. It uses something called the smoothing constant and the efficiency ratio, mathematical formulas. I won't go into the details, but that's the, what the basis 
of the AMA is. And as I say here, it's not really a moving average. It's a it's a smoothing constant uh, and, and an efficiency ratio. However, what it does do uh, is, uh, from a negative point of view, one of the criticisms of it, like with moving averages, is it does have the, uh, less lag, but it does still exhibit lag laggingness, as I've tried to write here, the lagginess, laggingness of moving average. So immediately, people that don't like moving averages immediately switches them off. But moving averages are the bedrock of trending markets. If you want to be a trend following trader, you know, you know, moving that you can do a lot worse and look at moving averages. So if we compare the AMA to the EMA, okay, so with the same number. So the as you can see here, the 20 um, period uh, AMA tends to have flat zones, more flat than the exponential moving average. Okay, so you can see these flat zones. So when a moving average is flat, particularly the AMA and the TMA, TEMA, we're going to look at in a moment, you definitely want to be out of the market if you're a trend follower. Okay. So sometimes it's close to the price action, sometimes it's further away from the price action because it moves this lagginess. So as you can see, they're very, very similar. Uh, but you know, the flatness of the of the AMA is more exaggerated than it is in the exponential moving average. See, it's a bit more choppy here, it's flat. But you know, the point is here it's further, so we, you know, you want to be looking to be short here because it's under obviously we have this massive so this is euro on the one hour. Um had this massive move down, so still uh, short here. You probably triggered looking to go long as it's moved over here. That's simple. Okay. If you want to um, put it on your your charts, it's um, they're just they're very easy to. I haven't actually done this. Have I? If I open a new, I don't use CAD. So it's there under the under the trending indicators. Okay. So we want to insert indicators. Um, there's the TMA, the triple exponential moving average, and there's the adaptive moving, just obviously I've used them, but you find it under trend normally. Uh, and there's the adaptive moving average. Okay. We're going to come on to these numbers in a minute. Okay. I'll explain those in a minute, but that's that's my settings. The nine period fast EMA uh, is two, and the slow EMA is um, 30. So the AMA, the adaptive moving average, is a combination of exponential moving averages here on this platform. So you get the one line, uh, that's the, I think it's the 20, 20 is that still, yeah, the 20 period. Uh, sorry, that's the nine period. I'll come on to that in a minute, okay? That was just an example of the uh, 20 period comparing it to the exponential moving average, so the AMA, the AMA, okay? Uh, and here's this idea about flatness, you know, when they're flat, stay out, but wait, you know, be on the right side of the move. So we've had a move up here with short flatness, so it doesn't work. You want them, as with all moving averages, trend following, you want a trend, okay? When the market is going sideways, nothing's happening. You know, it looked like it was going to reverse really quickly, but trend, you know, there, here, in these sideways actions, when the moving average is flat, see how flat there, flatter there, the blue line is compared to the yellow line, okay? So you get a much clearer example of, of flatness is the wrong word, of, of non-trending markets, okay? That's why I say the AMA during a trending market becomes faster or swings more quickly in the direction of the price movement, okay? So here, it's not swinging at all, is it? it's flat, so nothing's happening. It's saying it's cancelling each other out. Here, it moved really aggressively. Here, it's moved really aggressively as the price action is, is triggered. So here, you know, if you've been short and long these, as it's chopped around the moving average here without any direction, you know, that big move down there and that huge move up there is more than compensated for any tra trade you've taken during this sideways action. Okay. And this is this is on the 15 minute chart. So obviously the shorter the time frame, the more choppy the markets are. Okay, especially in trending markets. Okay. Everybody still with me? Right, good. Okay, so that's the AMA. Okay. Closer to the price action. Uh, there's just another example of what I'm talking about. The cross, you can use it with the EMA for, for cross potentially, but you know you can see the flatness when we uh, start to move out. Um, but you want to be trending. You want to be the right side of the move. Okay, and don't be afraid to be long here. Don't be afraid to be short here. That's what a lot of traders get hung up with. They can only trade in one direction. 
you know markets chop around very quickly overall from whenever this is from november 21 to april 2022 the price is sort of well from this big low it's gone up hasn't it but really it's really been in a channel hasn't it, it couldn't get over 180 didn't want to go below sort of 150 has it so it's a big 30 dollar range for apple over all of this this um whatever this is this is uh uh november through to the end of march for this uh you know four period four month period it's really range bound but there's been some significant trends up down up down up downish <laughs> as we got to the end of the as april started okay so you know don't be afraid to use it okay so for the AMA, that's the settings I've used. I've used the nine, the two, and the 30. They're the settings I use. Keep the fast AMA and slow AMA fixed at two and 30, but just change the period. The uh, the, the higher the period, the more sen the lower the period, the more sensitive it is to the price action. So just like normal moving averages, the lower the number, the closer it is to the price action. You could have this at 30, you could have it at 50. Uh, let me just demonstrate. It doesn't actually change it much. So that's the nine, that's the uh setting if we look at the settings of this thing properties of the ama so if we change this to say 30 as well uh so we're using 30 count back it flattens it out more doesn't it we don't get the move so it's too you know we don't get those moves for this one hour time frame if we so go up to four hour it's even flatter isn't it so that i would um the lower the number so we say we, we had it at nine didn't we it's my default if we put it down to five You'll see it chops around more. It's more, you know, flat. But yeah, you know. so the lower the number, the more sensitive it is. Okay, so you could argue that's that's, you know, I like it. I've just set it you know, uh, at nine. Okay, so that's my setting nine, two, and thirty uh, for the AMA. Bit happy to if you want it. You know, the lower the number, the more sensitive it is. Okay, so that's the AMA. Okay, the adaptive moving average, Perry Kaufman. Lots and lots of strategies. He is the father of uh, Aldo trading uh, and um, a very well and highly regarded uh, technical analyst as well. Fourth one, or the one I'm going to finish with today, I'm going to talk about uh, technical uh, uh, Mike and Ashley because I've overrun hugely. Um, uh, I'm going to finish with the TEMA, the TEMA, or the Triple Exponential Moving Average. Okay. Uh, first come together uh, by Patrick Molloy uh, back in the 80s uh, in the uh, technical analysis of stock markets and commodities magazine. I used to get that every every uh, every week. Uh, fascinating magazine, really, really uh, nitty gritty technical analysis uh, for geeks uh, and uh, when computers were just uh, being developed in bits of paper and spreadsheets and lines and pencil drawings. But uh, anyway, um, so it blends together single, double, and triple exponential moving averages. Uh, the idea is that it smooths out the lag. The big criticism uh, of, of, as we said before, of all moving averages is the lagginess. So this TEMA, the TEMA, tries to smooth out the price action, which is the big benefit of, of moving averages, and try to reduce the lag. So, and, um, um, so it smooths other indicators as well if you put them in. But its idea of tries to reduce the lag because it crunches the numbers uh, into one line okay if we're going to put these two things we've just talked about together what you can get is an ability to get in and get out scaling in scaling out you know if when they finally cross you know slower signals as we said they're lagging this uh but the key thing is key principle when they're flat there's no trend so you stay out so it keeps you out of wrong trades okay that's one of the beauties of it. You can get in, get out as they cross, scale in, scale out as they're crossing the other way, uh, but keeps you out when the market's flat. So as a trend following trader, you know, you don't want to be in when it's not tra trending, do you? Okay. So what's been happening? So here, so here we've got the two we've just talked about. So we've got the AMA with the nine period setting and the TMA with the default 14 period setting. The red line's the TMA here on this setup, and the blue line uh, is the nine period. So here, we've been going down, but we're above, we've been playing with the uh, TMA here, haven't we? So one, two, three, four times. The price action has been below both the um, blue line and red line, so you sort of buy a short. 
here, this first tick here, this first yellow line here, the price action is is engulfed between the the, the blue and the red line. So we're, we've closed our short position here. If we didn't earlier, uh, this is an up candle. So we might be looking to oh, obviously we've got a down candle, down candle, up candle, down candle, down candles. The black candles here are up candles. The white candles are down candles. So we could have perhaps closed our short or even looked to go long. We would have definitely gone long using this strategy. We would definitely have gone long here at the following candle. Why? Because we're above the blue line and we're above the yellow line. Okay. We could then, I haven't actually got it on here, but there we could have then added it. See how the cross happens between these. So we could have then added a third position or a second position as the moving averages cross. So again, using trailing stop loss. Can these moving averages, uh, TMA, AMA, be it's TEMA uh, unch, uh, unch, uh, on the MT5 Android version? I don't know off the top of my head, sat here, unch. I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, TEMA, I'll find out for you and I'll send you an email. I'm not sure they can, to be honest. Um, but they certainly can on the MT5 uh, work stop, as you see here. I mean, these are all uh, variations of a theme, what I've talked about today. They're all, you know, trend following strategies so you know it, some work better than others uh, it's what works best for you what you find victor saying he can't hear hang on a minute all right no can everybody else still hear me victor am i still here seems all right here audio says it's all right it's probably because i've been going on for so long um so anyway so you get the point so like we've talked before here we would have had our stop loss down here originally We've trailed our stop loss up as we've started to move up. We've flattened out here, but we're still nicely aligned, aren't we? Oh, look what's happening. We've flattened out. The red TMA starts to flatten out as we have these four, five, what's that? One, two, three, six candles. So six minutes. It's only the minute chart. So this is scalping. So looks like it may be running out. So, you know, you had six minutes. It's like, well, you didn't. At this flatness, we didn't know that that was suddenly going to do that until we went out there. So we'd have got out there got out here again if we've been trailing our stop loss up uh we'd probably had our stop loss round about here and it would have been taken out before that candle was closed um uh, but that would have signaled a short why because we're below the red and the blue line now so we've closed our short during that candle we've gone sh sorry our long from down here we've now gone short here uh, and then we could have entered again there could have entered on that because the gap down and it's gone lower that's a nice entry and then we cross here, so we could have entered here. So we could have entered here, here, and here. And the trend keeps running. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Might have got out there as it's retraced above, but then got back in here a minute later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we're still short. And it's gone flat. You might consider getting out because the 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 TMA and the AMA have gone flat. Gone flat. Uh, the AMA in this case, uh, but it's then reversed back here. Obviously, this is one minute chart, so it's moving very very quickly. Uh, happy always still here um so and again if you look at my um if we open my profiles i've got this saved as this one here ema so you can see that tm T E M A A M A, and they um that's there we go that's the pound in the similar you know different yeah it's red and blue again yes yes just ignore the uh, I'm saying ignore the ind indicators, but you can still use the same principle of the using the T ATR if you want to um, to get that. So here with this strategy, uh, again, flat out, flat out. But now we've got here on the one hour strategy that again would have triggered a short position, wouldn't it? We've gone flat, but the red has crossed the blue. So this strategy and the other crossing moving average strategies here for sterling today, uh, it's short. Uh, we're plotting new lows, so we've been short from 120, 21.9, and uh, if our stop loss, again going back to first principles we talked about earlier, our initial stop loss is up there. That's our stop loss. That's our risk reward for one to one, is uh, 450, 350 points again. We'd have got that in the last hour one to one. Now um, that's our entry. Our stop loss probably. I'd have my stop loss down here now it's on our entry so we've locked in our profits uh that's a non-losing trade so our stop loss is at our entry now 
uh, and see what happens if we haven't taken out. Or we could have used the ATR and you know taken 21 points out of that move down. So whatever strategy you use, obviously use a stop loss, use a target, or don't use a target, just let the stop loss be your target, set your target with the ATR, step your stop loss with the ATR, whatever you do it. Um, these are trending strategies. So a uh, big move here on Friday, sideways yesterday, really. See how it hasn't worked yesterday. Looked like it was going up, didn't happen, looked like, but it was flat. It was suggesting to you nothing's happening. Okay. That was the first sign. But even at that point here on this one hour time frame, it was still flat, wasn't it? It's still a relatively risky trade because we've been sort of sideways all that time, haven't we? What's added to the motion or the pressure down is the fact that we've broken these lows from yesterday in the last hour or two. So this 120.04.05, and it just happens to be that's that huge round. There's a huge round number there as well. That's the other thing. Obviously, I've just talked about candle patterns today and just doing what the candles are saying, but don't ignore what the price action is telling you. The price action is saying there's a huge, huge psychological number there, and it's the massive uh, 120.000 um, that will obviously provide a huge. So there's that 120 for cable. And again, if you've traded cable for any length of time, you will know that 120 is on many, many banks' lips as targets and issues. So there we go. We broke that psychological level today and it's continued to move lower. That will probably be the hug. So again, use common sense as well. Okay, so Sterling, as I leave you today, traders, is still short. Uh, our stop loss is well, uh, back to our entry, so we can't lose. Oh, you can't lose on that trade, and you might even have it down at our first target now as well, just to lock in the profits. But again, are you use the the moving average and wait till they cross back over again? Okay, I'm not going to do the uh, hike and actually because I've gone on for too long and my voice is about to go. Uh, I will. No, there are whole webinars just on hike and actually as well itself. So. Thank you for your time today, guys and girls. I uh, hope you've, that's made sense. Trending strategies, uh, moving averages are great, whatever type of moving average you use. They can be applied to all sorts of markets. We talked about the difference between Forex and stocks. Uh, as I say, we, we've got a physical stock account now as well, so you can go long. That's like investing in stocks. Uh, so instead of trading, uh, going short with CFDs, you can invest and hold uh, these positions. So. Uh, there we go. Uh, I'll say I'll do Hike and Ashley another day, um, different type of candle pattern, but again, great with uh, ATR and trailing stop loss. So uh, thank you for your time today, everyone. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we've got some live analysis uh, with Andrea. Uh, more on basic candlesticks um, with uh, Otto on Thursday. So some of the things we saw today, you'll be explaining the candle patterns. We haven't talked about any of that today. We're just talking about you know following the rules of moving averages. Uh, take all the moving averages off and just look at price action. Let Andrea, Andrea will explain that uh, and using it against pullbacks and for breakouts as well. Uh, Fibonacci on the 16th, uh, multiple time frames. Again, a key uh, constituted of many traders' approaches. I've used move, move, moving higher time frames. You know, if you're trading a one minute scalping, what's the 10 minute chart doing? What's the 15 minute chart doing? What's the four hour chart doing? You know, What's the 30 second chart doing? That's what multiple time frame analysis is all about. Uh, live analysis, I say every uh, every Wednesday, so do join us uh, tomorrow for that with Andrea. Uh, uh, awesome oscillator, uh, another not a trending indicator this time, but a a, a, a sideways market indicator. Uh, if you're going to call something awesome, it should be pretty good, shouldn't it? Is it awesome? Join Otto on the 23rd to find out. And finally, to wrap up the month, I'll be talking. Oh, Andrew will be talking about um, uh, the COT report, the commitment of traders report uh, that comes out every Friday about what the real market, as we we touched on it earlier today, what the real market participants in the futures and the options market, where are they positioned? Are they long? Are they short? Where is their money? Where is their skin in the game uh, for different assets, particularly the dollar? So COT report, very important for many traders. Find out more about it if you don't know about it. Uh, with Andrea on the 28th. So thank you for your time, everyone. Take care, trade safe, may the trend be with you as ever. Um, I'll leave you my three favorite trading books of all time. Um, and my favorite from last year, this one, uh, Tom Hugard, The Best Loser Wins, Why Normal Thinking Never Wins in a Trading Game. 
uh, and uh, fascinating reading. A lot of the stuff um, I articulate and have done for years. Uh, Tom's put in a book, uh, so well done him. Uh, he used to do a job very similar to ours here, and now he's a, a full-time um, high-stake day trader. Uh, fascinating character. Uh, great talker <laughs> as well. Okay, guys, take care, stay safe. Uh, we'll see you all again uh, tomorrow uh, with Andrea. Uh, so live analysis, same time. Uh, and uh, all the very best, everyone. Join us um, on our analysis page. Send me an email at webinars at hfm.com. Uh, you've got the uh, slides. Have a look at them. Uh, please let me know. Uh, Joseph, what do you mean? Yes, I want to have it. Can you share with me through my email? Do you mean the slides or the books? I'm not sure what you mean, Joseph. I'm not giving my books away. I'm not giving books away. I'm just saying, uh, have a look at the books. Uh, I'll send you it. I'll, Joseph, I'll send you. I'll send you an email anyway. And communicate over email, okay? All right, guys. Take care. Stay safe, and uh, may the trend be with you, as I said before. All right. All the best, everyone. Bye bye. Solomon, absolute yes, yes, of course. Trienda, yes. Send me an email. Uh, and I say the quickest way is this one here, um, webinars at hfm.com. Put my name on it, say the support guys will pass it on to me. Okay. No problem. Take care. See you all. All the best. Bye-bye.